Hey guys, this is going to be my unboxing and review of the new Black Box UPS by AnyPower. So, previously I reviewed the T-Power Plus, which I've been using two of these. And if you watched my previous reviews, you know I had three actually, and one of them stopped outputting power. So I got into contact with AnyPower and sent back the defective one and they actually sent me back a newer model or it's at least an alternative model <clears throat> the T-Power Plus Alpha which you can see right there so the box looks pretty much the same and I'm guessing the contents are the same I think the main difference is this cannot actually uh, reverse charge to jumpstart you know quote jumpstart your car but it does have a USB output instead so I'm not really sure if you would count this as an upgrade or just an alternate model but some people would rather have a USB output I personally already have my all power battery charger so I can jumpstart my car anyway so I don't even need that feature I carry that battery in my car too so I don't need it so the USB would actually become more useful for me. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and we'll compare it with the original model and then I'll do some tests. So on the inside the box looks the same. It came with the instructions on the top just like the other one. Except this is a fold out manual. I'll show the other manual later but this one just folds out. One side is Korean and then the other side is English. Here's the actual device. So the front looks pretty much the same, but the LEDs are a little different. And there you can see the USB. So the side is also different. The blue button was moved. You can see the reverse charge is gone. So on the inside, the contents are the exact same. There's the hard wiring cables. The cigar adapter cable, where this plugs into your 12 volt socket. And then the socket for your dash camera. And like the other one, it comes with some Velcro if you want to mount it somewhere in your car with Velcro. So the instructions this time came with both English and Korean. I'm not sure <clears throat> if this is because, well actually I bought this, the original ones on eBay and they shipped from Korea too, so I'm not totally sure why they changed it, but this one comes, this is the new one, it comes in the booklet or uh, fold-out form where the, the original had a actual folding book style manual so I was going through it and it actually seems like they wrote it a little better one of the things I mentioned in the first video review was that the way they describe how the parking mode worked was sort of confusing but here it seems to be a lot more clear so it says when there's no connection the device operates as the output LED turns on once the red protector on off switch for more than three seconds so it's not perfect English but if the power has been bypassed if the power that has been bypassed is stopped the power saved in the internal battery of the main body will automatically start to support the black box recording at this time the black box will be converted to parking mode and then it explains cigar mode 
for connecting to a home adapter. Where in the original one, I thought it was a little more confusing. It says said default setting of protector function is on. When it's pressed for more than two seconds, it will be operated with a signal sound. When it's off, low voltage cutoff functions, etc., are stopped, and only power is supplied from bypass power. So the main reason I was confused with that, though, is, from my knowledge, the protector mode is actually off by default. You actually have to turn it on, and you know it's on when the second light turns on. Or wait. So now it's off. Typically it's off, and then you have to turn it on, and then the bat, bat on light turns on. And it calls that the first light, which is another thing that confused me, because it's a technically the second light. But this one seems to make the instructions much more clear. Either way, I figured it out without much complications anyways. So it looks like this one actually came with a full charge, which is nice. So just like the first one, if you hit that, it'll tell you what cutoff it's at. I'm going to put it to 12. It's recommended in winter and cold climates you use a higher. Oh, wait. So that's a little weird. When you tap it once, it says 11.8 volts as the cutoff, but then you see it blink down 12 volts. So when you hold it, it says it's on 12 volts. So there you can see it's outputting power if I have something connected. Now I turned it off. You actually don't have to press it as long anymore, which I like. See, that turned it off. <clears throat> We're here. It's off, or it's on right now, so it's outputting power. See, I had to press it for a couple seconds to turn it off, or this one. Well, actually, this one you had to turn press for a few seconds to turn off, but to turn it on, I just had to press it once. So, that turned it on, that turned it off, where here it's a little bit longer, that turned it on. That turned it off. So it seems like they shortened it a little bit. So one thing I've noticed with the new one is when it's plugged in, you can't actually turn the protector mode on or off. They don't even call it that anymore. Here you can see it says protector on off. And there it just says on off. So say I park my car in my garage and I know it's going to be there overnight and I don't want to drain the battery on this. What I have to do now is just unplug the camera. It seems like a hassle, but with the old model, I still had to hold this down for two seconds to turn it off. So I'm not really sure why they did that. I sort of liked that feature. You can still turn it on or off while it's unplugged. But as long as there's power coming in, the battery is going to be outputting power if it senses not enough voltage from your car battery. One minor thing I did notice on the front is on the new version, cigar mode is on the bottom, where on the old one, cigar mode is on the top. So they did switch that for whatever reason. And other than that, they seem to be the same. 
besides the USB and lack of uh, reverse power. But uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drain both. Actually, I have my other one in the car, so I'm going to plug this one in place of that one. And I'm going to drain both of them completely, just run my cameras until they're both dead. And then I'm going to drive around on the highway. Like, I usually have some 20 minute commutes or longer sometimes. So I'm going to drive for 20, 30 minutes, see how much each one charges. Because one of the features of this one is it's supposed to charge a lot quicker. I think the website said 75% charge in half hour of driving, which this original one seems like it'll get maybe half a charge and half an hour of charging and they claim that this one charges quicker than the previous model so I'm going to test that out. So I already had a video on how I have my T-Power Plus batteries in my glove box but I wanted to make a new one just in case anyone didn't see that previous one but here you can see that one has the USB so this is the alpha version and the one below is just a normal version. So the cords actually go up through there and they come all the way around and uh, they go to the fuse box to my left side. So after using this for about two weeks now, it is sort of hard to tell how much better it actually is than the original one. When I drained the batteries and plugged them in, it seemed like this one was actually charging quicker. But then I had issues where the charging LED kept uh, turning off and on. You can see the bottom LED says charge. So I don't know if it was because I had too many devices plugged in, because I have my two Blackview two-channel systems that I always have. I have my new radar detector, which I think was plugged in at the time, and I might have had my Blackview DR3500 plugged in because I'm reviewing that currently. So this one actually, from what the instructions say, doesn't draw power from your car battery to charge if it's below 12.5 volts. So. You can have it set so it's still powering your camera below 12.5 volts, but it's not going to charge the internal battery anymore once it's below 12.5 volts. So it's possible maybe when I was idling I had a really low voltage. I've had problems with this battery or my car battery that I got just a couple months ago, and that was the reason why I got these. So. It's probably a combination of just running too many devices in my car with not a big enough alternator and it being really cold. So, you know, it's been negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit some days, so that's always going to be a huge issue on your car battery. But other than that, it seems like it does actually last longer. Any power claims that this has some sort of digital blocking technology so it doesn't use any power while it's idling, but I guess I can't really notice that for myself. One strange thing that I've noticed though is my camera seems to power down and it'll say it has two, uh, two LEDs of power or two bars of power and it seems strange to me. When I think back, maybe it was actually that LED and that LED, but I could have sworn it always said that I had two bars. And maybe it's possible that it's just not displaying it accurately, because one time I checked the battery after it should have been charged or charging, and it said one bar. And then I checked again a minute later and suddenly it jumped up to three bars. So maybe the LEDs just aren't displaying accurately. So in the end, even though I was having issues with the LEDs seeming to not display correctly, or maybe maybe I was just reading them wrong, 
it did last long. With a two channel system like the DR650 or 550, the Blackview website, at least the Singapore Blackview website, lists about 10 hours of time and that's about what I'm getting. I seem to actually get more than that sometimes also. I think having these in my glove box helps because it keeps it warm inside there. In the end, I think if something like the Power Magic Pro isn't working for you and you live in a cold climate like me, I think these are still a great option to give you extra time on your cameras because my cameras will run sometimes two hours only before it cuts off and has to use this battery because of my car battery just not holding up with all the devices and the cold temperatures. I think right now you can buy these on eBay for $150 so that's pretty steep. I don't think most people are going to be willing to pay that much but I know a couple retailers are thinking of picking them up. Uh, Alex from Black Box My Car was going to try these devices and he might add them to his store and Pure 28 might have interest in it, I'm not totally sure, but either way, $150 if you got the money to blow, I personally like them and I think it helps me a lot that since I had the income to spend on them, I think it was worth it. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, I'd appreciate if you hit like or subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.